And uh, we're, we're going to talk about, mag is it magnetic particle testing? Yes. See, I want to say Magnetech, but that's a company, so yes. I don't want to say that. So magnetic particle testing. Um, what is that? Why is that? What does this mean? What's up guys, welcome to our roundtable conversation. Uh, we're gonna do a bunch of these when we're just really breaking into a topic. I bring everybody here that's involved and we just attack it head on. If you have any questions, please comment below. Uh, I'm joined by Tom Horner, who is a corporate rigging manager. Is that correct to yes. say? Does that sound right? Yep. And I'm also joined by Mike Close, who is a corporate writer person. Is that safe to say? Uh, yes, content manager. Ah, content manager, I guess that's more, more clear and crisp. My name is Devin, I'm one of the videographers here at Mozilla Companies, and today we're gonna talk about Mac what do you do? Well, I'm sorry, what do you do? I Who do are you? Video, videos? Okay. Videos, I believe is what I do. Okay. And uh, we're, we're gonna talk about, mag is it magnetic particle testing? Yes. See, I wanna say Magnetech, but that's a company, so yes. I don't wanna say that. So magnetic particle testing. Um, what is that, why is that, what does this mean? Ah, uh, good question. <laughs> magnetic particle testing is a form of NDT, which is non-destructive testing. Okay. It's basically where we introduce a magnetic field into uh, an item and use a, uh, a dust, uh, basically iron a dust, I believe. If done properly, will yield what is called an indication. And I, again, I want to keep this conversation very simple and preface it actually by saying we are not a non-destructive testing company. Okay. We're a rigging company, or I'm a rigging inspection group who has the capability of performing this very basic level form of NDT. Well, it, it's kind of what, it's one and the same. Okay. But basically, let's adapt it to a crane hook. And with a crane hook, it, there, there's nothing that says you shall have your hooks NDT tested. Okay. The basic visual when the guys are doing it is, is what's required. However, it's not a bad complement to a visual because a lot of times crane hooks will suffer wear, or what I call mushrooming, where material is just kind of being worn out and pushed off to the side. Right. Okay. And, and you'll see this happening. And when that starts to happen, that wear causes what's called a stress riser. And at the stress riser, um, that would be the most likely place for a crack to form. Okay. So we can use the magnetic particle testing to possibly identify what may be an indication. <laughs> and then from there we have to do further sure. investigation to, to make that determination. So that, again, real murky. Real mur it, it is very murky because, like I said, it's, it's so limited. Okay. And we're just being honest, it's so limited because there's a lot of factors that, that play into this. Um, items cannot be painted because this only looks for surface and, and shallow subsurface discontinuities. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there's a thick layer of paint, it's not gonna be able to penetrate the paint. And you gotta grind it off, right? Right, you gotta clear all the paint off. Because when you're doing sling tag, we talked about this before, there's people that will, will just color coat all their stuff so it's, it's clear for whatever. So if that happens, you typically can't test that one unless, like Mike Correct. said, you grind all that paint off? Right, think, think about a spreader beam. They paint them real nice and yellow, yep. yeah. and you want us to inspect your bale, and you say, hey, can you throw a magnetic particle on it? Not if it's painted. Yep. Yeah. And we talked about this with uh, the crane group as well. We had, a, we had a kind of a round table discussion about arch beams, window track, zipper track, castellated beams, and they told us that the crane service group um, can be called in to do mag particle testing on their track and they said it is the most time-consuming thing that they can do because one they have to grind paint off yes two they have to do every square inch of that track all the way through the facility and perform this magnetic particle procedure and like you said you're really not finding out a whole lot you're fine and you're getting an indicator of an yes. area that may possibly be weakened or yes could be um, nice. you know Right. It, like I said, that, that, that's what I mean. Is it's, it's something we do offer, but it's something that's not often easily uh, applicable mm -hmm. to, to something. Because so, it doesn't seem very cost effective if I... Because there's another way to test it, right? Without 
ignoring the paint or whatever else. There are other ways, but then you have to ask why you're even asking that question. For sure. Because it's not required anywhere. So, you know, getting to the crane world, they're going to have much different standards and, and requirements, and that's probably could be an internal requirement at, at mm -hmm. that customer. Whenever we get the serious inquiries into non-destructive testing, something really specific, I'll actually job it out to a third party okay. specialist. That makes okay. sense. Because if you want to really understand what a non-destructive spe uh, testing specialist is, they're generally metallurgists. So they're engineers, and to be and, and to be a level three, I, I want to say it, it's just an incredible amount of hours that they have to be supervised under the watch of another level three. Um, I think road construction is like that. You have different people that are qualified to work on different. So say like a site, like an alley versus a main road versus mm -hmm. like a highway. Mm -hmm. Certain people can do certain things, and those are the people that are the specialists that you'll see on the highway because not everybody can do it. Mm -hmm. So then, is this particle testing kind of the same thing? You, you have only a couple guys in the world that can do this, so it's it's almost like a premium service, really. It, it absolutely is a premium service, and like I said, there's so many different levels to it. Okay. Um, and that and just the documentation and and the way that a specialist would do it is really much different than we would. That's why I'm saying it's a very basic level. We can apply it to a crane hook. We might be able to apply it to a special area mm -hmm. on a, uh, a spreader beam. Like I said, if, if you want to, you know, grind away your, your, your paint on some of the welds because you just want us to get a double check, that's fine. Okay. We can do it at that base level. That's just, that's not a problem. Who typically initiates that? Is that a customer request or are there certain instances where you, where we would recommend it, it's having a, it performed? It's almost a, always a customer request okay. and what we'll find is after we start to ask some questions is it was generally just an idea they had. They just like, read it and they're like, hey, you know what like, would be cool? You know what would be cool <laughs> is, is, hey, on top of this, let's go above and beyond with, let, let's test it and let's magnetic particle it. Or something like that. Okay. And then when you start really digging in and asking the questions and presenting what they're up against and present all the different options, it usually becomes a, well, that's probably not going to be a fit for us. Right. Well, let's and, and be clear too. It's it's not required by it's, any it's, standard. It's not required have. anywhere. And I've seen some people hire some third parties to do some incredible stuff that just did not really make any sense. I was somewhere, I think it was at an old mill one time, and somebody was doing some sort of ultrasonic testing, which it, it's, it's basically, they can image deep into the heart of like a crane hook okay. to see if there's anything wrong on the inside of the crane hook. What would have ever happened to the inside internals of a crane hook mm -hmm. over the last 20 years so since it was forged. So it's an audible test, right? So they're essentially just playing Foo Fighters into the hook something, to see if it bounces straight back or not? I believe something like that to see if anything was wrong on the inside. What Weird. would be wrong on the inside? Unless something happened at the time of manufacture where it was a poor forging or casting, mm -hmm. what, would, what would have happened? Nothing would start on the inside. Unless, like you were saying, unless there was something that was in the mold or there was air. That's was what I'm saying, yeah. But they would have known that. Right. Go, yeah, yeah. Or, you know, type thing. So I, I, it might not have been the best example, but what I really just want to get to is that when you're thinking about the non-destructive testing and, and all the different ways of using it, it's just often not needed. Yeah. But it's, it's something we can, we mm -hmm. can sort out with you, absolutely. So what, what are the situations or advantages where, you know, it is a good idea? I, I think it's really a good idea uh, on crane hooks. Okay. Um, I can tell you over the years, I've only discovered a few crane hooks that had an actual crack, mm -hmm. something we actually went, you know, through multiple steps to, to make a determination. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it, it is that mushrooming in, and when you go through the process of cleaning certain things up, and you keep retesting it until you get to a certain point, um, it, it's a, just a great way to create peace of mind with somebody. And again, if we're already there, and you've got 20 crane hooks, we can 
knock that out in, in really no time because the process itself, if you're if you're using it properly, is, is actually very quick because okay. it's really the most simple, the really the most simple form. Unless you're grinding away paint, also. Unless stuff. you're grinding away paint, but then you, you get into areas we won't touch because we're not going to bring in our own equipment to do that because mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into doing hot work and right. permits sure. and all sorts of other things. If you customer want to do that, I'll tell you what to do and then you can, like I said, have at it, but mm -hmm. you still better be very careful. So then if you have that conversation where you just kind of tell them, you know, this is something that you can do, I have a recommendation on who to go to to get it done. Does that kind of still maintain your relationship with them working after the fact? You know, they go and they get mag particle testing from somewhere else, but then they'll still call you to come back later on and still help them. Oh, absolutely, you. absolutely. Cool. And like I said, there, there's very few customers who actually really go that far. Uh, there's a couple, a few special applications, and, and like you said, it, it gets down to when you're doing certain items, you do have to do every square inch. So you're making sure they're clean, and then you're marking the mm -hmm. area you're doing like maybe you chalk it out and yeah. say I just did this sure. six by six area sure because you have to hit it from different angles and then you did this six by six area well could you imagine doing all of these tables no. yeah yeah six that, by six and that's what our crane guys said they said can you imagine doing like 150 foot 150 runway? Were one right yeah and they said basically sometimes we have to do it in chunks where we can only do a quarter of it at one time mm -hmm. and they don't want to keep production down any longer than that and yep. then Mm -hmm. You know, you come back a couple right. months later or a couple weeks later. And, and then the dust back. is a little dirty, so you got to clean all your dust yeah. off. Yeah. You know, and, and can, it, can, can it be in the air? Can it, are you going to be dusting on something that even if you get everything off, is it <clears throat> get on a, on a piece of your equipment mm -hmm. or something you just produced? Mm -hmm. So you just want to be real cognizant of, of that. Do you guys do any other type of non-destructive testing, like dye penetrant testing or anything? I do have a gentleman who is dye penetrant certified. We have one customer that uses it for one item, mm -hmm. but that is even a more strict application because it's temperature controlled mm -hmm. okay. and the item has to be explicitly clean, I mean very clean, mm -hmm. and then it's a multiple uh, multiple step, I believe they they spray a, a, an indicator, and, and I, I can't remember the, the exact names, but it's multiple. It's a labor steps. intensive. It's process. labor intensive. It's very expensive. There's about four or five steps there's, to that whole yes, procedure to get through it, and yeah, it's yeah. very expensive because the kits themselves are very expensive. Okay. And it's just not it, again. It's just not one of those things that are needed. Yeah. But if somebody just really wants that peace of mind, we'll look at the application and see what we can do for you. And are these performed in house, or do you do you have to bring the gear back somewhere to a clean we, we, clean room or a we'll, lab? Or? We'll go there, but okay. again, those are going to be the limitations. Sure. You know, in, in the dead of winter, in a in a certain place, because of the temperature ranges. Right. Sometimes it just won't work mm -hmm. because of the temperature, and sometimes it's going to be very slow. Sure. So something that in the right temperature could take 30 minutes, and the wrong temperature could take three hours. That's crazy. Yeah. So again, but that's why I really wanted to touch on this. Is yeah, there are capabilities. Sometimes it makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of times we'll make new product for customer out of our below the hook shop. Um, I know we had an automotive customer that used to buy a lot of product and part of the process um, for the manufacturer had to be all of them after proof testing had to be magnetic particle tested. Huh. And that was absolutely possible Okay. because everything was clean, yeah, okay. it just got tested, we threw the mag particle to it. Um, and the reason we did that is because there was special heat treating involved on some of these hooks with the special welds, mm -hmm. so we had to go back and check, sure, make sure the the welds were mm -hmm. were done properly, all that. But stuff. that makes sense because then you're just adding that into the like, the manufacturing sure. timeline. You know, we we'll do this, do this, and then we have to test it. So mm -hmm. your lead time is actually going to be this, but then we'll give you your mag test and all that good right. stuff. Yeah. We, we have a customer that uses what we call a die pin, and uh, they're actually the originator of why Mazella got into magnetic particle, mm. and this was long before I started working, but their die pins, the way that they slide into a die, just imagine, you know, maybe a six inch area of pin that slides in. Well, if it doesn't go in all the way, it's picking like this, so you're putting a tremendous amount of pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so after every time 
we sold them a new one or, or, or one came in for repair, they have to check yeah. those areas for, for issues. Right on. So it, I mean, this is, a, it's actually a relatively complicated issue just for all the reasons that people get it or how it doesn't work sometimes and it does in other applications. So if people wanted to learn more about this, more than just what's in this video, um, what's available to them to, to research more, to learn more, to read more? Honestly, I would just do your research online and there's going to be a lot of information out there from um, the, the technical uh, organization that, that that runs the standards, okay. and then also just from all the third parties, you know, same suppliers that do this stuff, and they'll give you a lot of good information too, and obviously there's there's videos out there. And, and then so if they wanted to call and ask you about that, could they call you or contact you through our website? Or? Absolutely, and I'll answer the questions as best as I can, and if, they're, if it's above my head, I'll just be honest and say, hey, you know, I, I just don't know that, and what you're probably looking to do isn't something that, that we're in, you know, we're gonna be a fit for. And again, I, I think and that knowing knowing you and how you'd probably answer, I think again it all comes down to training and inspection. Yeah. I mean, yes, it's a nice tool to have possibly in your tool belt, sure. but you know if you're looking at your crane hooks, if you're you know you're keeping your eye on things like that, you're inspecting your below the hook devices as required by ASME standards before use. You know you, you probably don't necessarily need it unless for very specific applications yeah. where you know you could be putting. Uh, you know, unnatural stresses or right. fatigue on the on the material. Two points to what you just said there, and, and, and that was one reason I wanted to have this discussion, is because magnetic particle is thrown around as something that's just easy. It's like, oh man, I'm gonna I can get these mag tested, and yeah. it's like, and then man, they're, gonna, and they're go. doing a, you know you know throwing an electromagnetic field in this area. Yeah. They're gonna dust. Yeah. And they're gonna check different angles, and it sounds like we're really going above and beyond. Oh, yeah. mm, let's talk deeper. But the next thing is we actually, if you can believe this, a lot of people don't understand that. They're like, hey, I need to get my, my chains mag tested. Mm. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> somebody said I need to get all the hooks on my, on my alloy chains tested. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so then you have to be like, okay, they know they need something. <laughs> right. So you go back to that beginning and you write the training. But then you have to explain to them deeper. It's not that it's just not required. Mm. You have to explain them the properties of the alloy chains. They're designed to stretch. They're designed to bend and to twist a certain amount mm -hmm. to give you that indication. indication. Yeah. So that, that's why you don't need <laughs> yeah. this type of testing. And, and think about it, if, if, if you were to do an entire chain sling. Versus the cost of buying a Versus the cost of buying one. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you take a, a 20 foot inch and a quarter quad mm -hmm. and I could probably have that done in a couple days mm -hmm. if I went item by item link by link truly trying to do it and even the way we do it probably isn't even the best way you'd probably want a wet bath okay and then how are you gonna get that thing into a wet bath? so you have to look at mm. really informing yourself about what non-destructive testing and the other variations of the magnetic particle because there, there are many right on so what i'm what i'm hearing is that this this video this conversation it's a really good starting place for you because there's a lot of things to consider there's a lot of applications there's there's a lot to this whole magnetic particle testing thing so i encourage you you know watch the video again if you need extra clarification but like as mike said there, there's a ton of information out there on the web tom is available to you as is his team if you guys have any questions please reach out ask your questions get clarification because i mean that example with the with the chain it's going to be cheaper to just buy a new chain than to go through and test every single one. But if it's in your head that that's what you need to do, you're going to be working on with bad information. And that's exactly what we want to get away from. We want to make sure that you are as informed as possible. So Tom, Mike, thank you. I appreciate it as always. Thank you. Always a good time. Doctor. 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 And uh, again, my name is Devin. Thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed.